Good afternoon. Uh, tough football game for the Pirates this past weekend. Uh, Got to take my hat off to Virginia Tech. Uh, I'll tell you why their program is successful. Their program is successful because they're well coached. Uh, I think they enjoy football and they played uh, lower than any football team we've played this year. It's a testament to their program. That, the, the way they played uh, was, was truly connected to the base fundamentals of the game. Um, they do have a really, really talented crew of guys. I, that would be a team that I would keep an eye on as they move forward because they were a good football team. Uh, number one, uh, to start, I think it goes to our front uh, and pass defense. And, and for us, pass offense. We felt like we had some good matchups offensively against them. Unfortunately, we could not hold up against their defensive pass pressure. Uh, it was um, two at a time, three at a time. Uh, sometimes we had exactly what we knew that we would have. That's why it was so uh, discouraging at times because we got exactly what we thought and we just could not hold up. Uh, flipping sides on the fronts. Thought our front did a good job for the most part holding the run into that big run where we missed all those tackles. We did a good job uh, holding their fronts. And unfortunately, when we went to pass pressure them, uh, they consumed our pressures and our blitzes and it put our defensive secondary in situations where they were in man-to-man -man coverage inside of the zone sometime way too long. We've got to continue to make sure that those work hand in hand. It's never what it appears to be on tape or what it appears to be from the stadium where it looks like a guy's out there not covering. It's really hard to cover for a certain amount of time. And then sometimes the pressure did get there. And on those times, our guys did a good job covering. Special teams, we had a lot of... Uh, mental errors on special teams, but it goes the block uh, field goal uh, and the block punt goes directly back to what I said earlier. They played lower than us. They put their strongest people right in front of our strongest people. Their pad level was better uh, on the field goal. We had our biggest, strongest people in front of their people. Their pad level was better. Uh, they pushed through in, in some one-on-one -on -one situations and made the block from the interior without jumping. Uh, we have to address that from a kicking standpoint and we also have to address it from a protection standpoint. And we've started to address both of those. Uh, moving forward, I thought uh, offensively there were some good things to come out of it. Um, once again, Zay Jones continues to prove that he is one of the better players in this conference, if not the nation. Uh, Philip Nelson did some really good things with the football. We've got to do a good job of keeping him upright. Also, he has to understand the management of the football game. There were some issues in the game where we didn't manage it quite the right way by throwing the ball away and not taking some hits. Um, defensively, we've got to tackle better. I think we've had great tackling circuits. We've got to move a little bit from tackling circuits to actually tackling people, which is sometimes problematic at this time of the year because of how uh, the least amount, the little amount of depth that we have. Uh, we have to do that. The other change that will be coming is that you'll start to see uh, a lot of our starters in special teams. We knew that we needed to get to this part of the year going through a tough non-conference schedule, which we enjoyed going through. We, we learned a lot about our team. Uh, and, and now it's time to, 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 to win the AAC. And the way that we do that is put our best foot forward in every situation. We're going to call on guys to, to play more snaps than they've ever had to play in any level of football. But that's what we have to do. Our kids embraced that challenge last, uh, last night. Uh, we look forward uh, to the challenge moving forward uh, with UCF, talking about a team that's riding a little bit of momentum now. Uh, he's doing a good job with them. They played some tough opponents, whether it be Michigan and Maryland and FIU. They play some tough teams. Uh, they know how tough this, uh, uh, this, this, this league is. They also are being led by Scott Frost, a guy that I have a tremendous amount of respect for offensively and defensively. Uh, they have did a, did a good job to get their program to where it's at. And this is a great test for us to start the AAC. But the best thing about all this is we're being able to start the AAC in Dowdy Ficklin. Uh, we needed to return home. It's time for us to return home. I think that uh, Virginia Tech's fans were very intelligent uh, in the way that they went about the game. Uh, they did feed off their crowd momentum, uh, and I thought that their team enjoyed to play. Uh, we used them as an example on how we played uh, at times where we played in Dowdy Ficklin. We have to come back and be prepared uh, to go and go at a high level. With Phillip, how do you kind of draw a line between him getting rid of the ball when he needs to, kind of for his own safety, um, and him hanging in a play maybe longer to try to let somebody get up? Well, we got to err on the side of caution. Punt is not a bad thing. Uh, you know, if you throw the ball away, uh, if we throw the ball away in the um, South Carolina game and we punt and, and we just take care of him or he's not getting up off the ground, 
Uh, we wouldn't be banged up uh, like we're banged up a little bit now in some different situations. That's a tough schedule. You just got to understand the management of the game. So you err on the side of caution. Throw it away. We'll leave. We'll li- we'll live to, to punt another day. Coach, how hard is it to decide when you're doing special teams whether you use starters or, or use young kids? And I know it's important to get the young guys right. some reps, but how? Very, very hard. In the beginning of the year, what you want to do is get those young guys out there as much as you can, and you hope that they develop to the point in time when you get to your conference schedule that they're ready to go. Uh, and, and throughout that process, you continue to put them through different tests, different tests. Uh, some of them pass. I'll tell you this. Uh, some of them pass with flying colors. I'll, I'll, I've said it to the whole special teams, our special team staff and the kids. If we'd had everybody come out and perform like Austin Teague did in that game, we'd have performed at a very high level. I'm talking about across the board. And, and that comes down directly to want to. Uh, he had to go against guys that were six foot four, 230 pounds, none of that. His will overcame all the other issues that we had. So what we're trying to put on the field is starters are not starters. But our starters came to us saying that, Coach, I know, you know, I may be on two. I maybe can be on three. I maybe can be on more. It's hard because you want to get those young guys as much reps because you're going to need them. We've gotten them some reps. Uh, and, you know, we've got to, at this point in time, we've got to put uh, our best foot forward. So we're going to try to play as many guys as we can, but we also have to understand that we do have some problems in certain situations with depth. Coach, I noticed McGill list is out. Have you guys heard you know, anything official as far as it will be a long-term thing? Yeah, I'll hear it. I'll get it at probably about 4, 4.30, 4.45 today. I'll have a better understanding of that. Uh, he was once again in another physical game uh, on the interior, and unfortunately that's what football is. But... We need somebody else now to step into his role. Uh, we, we're not going to look back. We're going to look forward. We think we have some people that can do that. If we get him back soon, great. Uh, I really would like to have him back soon. I think he's one of our better players that we have on our team, and especially from a production standpoint right now. Uh, but we also have to have, and that's why we play some other people earlier in the year, to try to get guys ready to, and, and prepare in these type situations. Coach, can you talk about pad level a little bit more, just to kind of explain it to the average fan? Yeah, so pad level, you know, playing low, everybody can give that lip service, but you have to physically strike people with pad level at a low. And a lot of times in the game, their eye level was below our eye level. Uh, it doesn't matter if a guy's 6'5", or a guy's 5'10", or 5'11". It's all about your stance and how you come out of your stance and how you strike. But what we try to teach is eyes below their eyes. And, and, you know, in a lot of situations, once you go back and look at the game, you'll see what I mean. The one-on-one situations that I'm talking about a lot of times are not the ones on the perimeter. Everybody in the stadium can see some of those one-on-one battles. But there are one-on-one battles that you have to have in the interior just to protect the quarterback because of the quarterback being the last player uh, on the offense to protect him. Well, you're going to be in some one-on-one battles in that situation. And we didn't win them because of pad level. And we will address that. We've addressed it before, and we've been pretty good with it. But when you go against a team that have great <clears throat> collective habits, like you have collective habits, and they meet, and their eyes are below your eyes, you know that you haven't met the standard. So we have to continue to push forward to meet the standard that we're going to play against a lot of good football teams. Coach Fred Presley hasn't played a lot at nose tackle. Talk about that adjustment and uh, what went into that decision. We thought that he gave us the ability with McGill inside uh, to play him outside a little bit more for a little bit more physicality at that position, especially when you're rolling up against teams with, you know, 310, 320 pound guys at the tackle, the guard positions, to be able to be stout on the edge as, as well as on the inside. We're going to call on Fred now a little bit more in some more different situations just because of our situation with Dimitri. But, you know, we'll find out a little bit more at 430, 445 exactly what we can, we can do in our front. You talked about uh, your first big win, how you got a lot of congratulatory texts from Bruce Arians and et cetera. Um, with this loss, uh, have you gotten any advice on how to respond to it? Yeah, a lot of it. Do what, you, do what you've been doing, just do it better, right? You know, stick to the schedule. Just stick to your schedule and being more detailed. Find, find you know, just find two, everything you can do from a standpoint of trying to make the team better. Uh, don't overanalyze. Don't change the system. The system, is, the system works. Uh, just do what you do and do it better. Uh, that's one thing that, that I know about our guys. They practice hard. They do things the right way. Every opportunity that we've had to hit the field, we don't practice bad here. Uh, I've been places where practice hadn't necessarily been good. but So we're not, we're not down on the process. We're not down on any of our guys. We just got to go back to work. We also realize that we played a pretty good football team. Uh, and sometimes when you play pretty good football teams, this happens to you. I don't like uh, to, to, to lose, but I'll tell you what. Uh, disappointment sometimes can be the pathway to creativity. And that is what we're looking for right now. We're going to be as creative as we possibly can to give our kids the opportunity to go out and be 1-0 in the AAC.
How much have you liked James Summers as a kick returner, and do you expect to, to keep using him in that role? You know, we had a lot of plans in this game for James, whether it been throwing, running it, returning it. Uh, when the game got out of hand, it, it kind of handcuffed us from a standpoint of what we can do offensively. Uh, and and it, it, it really affected our plan because it gave Coach Foster the ability to come after us a lot more than we wanted him to come after us and took us out of our run game. We thought we had significant run game that we could have used in that game. But once you get down by three touchdowns and you're almost in a hurry up mode in the early third quarter, you lose your run game. Well, when you lose your run game, you lose your run action game. Uh, and James is going to be a part of all of that. And uh, so, so going forward, Jay, you'll see more kind of hinted at that you'll see him in some different places in different spots. Unfortunately, we didn't do what we were supposed to do coming out of the locker room uh, to give him an opportunity to be as good as he could have been. Coach, you mentioned Zay and what you had with him, but what about with Jimmy? You targeted him twice in the end zone in South Carolina in the, the two explosive plays. We're trying, to, we're trying to make sure that Jimmy gets all the targets that he can. As you can see, to, st uh, to start the game, we felt like they were going to give us the matchup with Jimmy, which we don't think people know how good Jimmy is. So that was a matchup that we felt very comfortable with early, just taking shots. We knew there was going to be some shots in this game. They made some of those shots. We didn't make those shots early. We didn't make the play on two of those balls earlier. And if we make the play on two of those balls earlier, you're looking at a different situation, whereas every time they made, they took a shot on us, they had a diving catch or a guy make a spectacular catch or we drop coverage or something. We knew it was going to be that type of game. They dropped coverage on us several times in that game. And we didn't find either didn't find the open man or we didn't make the play. But we like Jimmy. We think that all year, because of, uh, you know, because of Zay getting leaned to when he's on one side of the field, Jimmy's going to have to be in some one-on-one -on -one matchups. You guys seen him make the whole catch, make the safety miss and go score. And that's because they got they have so much of their attention uh, to where number seven is. Coach, you think about starting Jake as a place kicker? Uh, right now, that is something that is, 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 is on the docket. We, I can't tell you the answer to that yet. I'll, I'll find out a little bit more as the week goes on. I really like what he did in the game. Um, I, I try to critique him as much as anybody else uh, because those, those situations can be helped if we can get uh, help on both sides from protection standpoint and kick standpoint. If you watch him, uh, his vertical kicking game off the, you know, off, off the hold is up, uh, and that was impressive. Not only was, was it up, I watched the depth and the, how long the kick could have been from. He did a really good job of not only driving it, but getting it up. So that's something that we looked at and we will look at and we'll continue to look at Davis moving forward. The play where Summers got sacked, it looked like Rice didn't block anybody. He just, was it a miscommunication? Or? No, it wasn't a miscommunication. We had a middle error right there that came from the sideline. It cannot happen. Uh, uh, Messiah has accepted responsibility for it. Uh, you know, those are the type of situations that you, you just – you cringe as a coach when you have it coached the way that you want it coached. Uh, you have the matchup with Jimmy that you want it matched up one-on-one. -on -one. And I don't think anybody in the, in the place thought that we were going to run the ball. I mean, we were going to throw it with James. So all those things just worked exactly the way that we wanted them to work. And we have a mental error coming from the sideline. Um, those are the reasons why uh, you don't perform well, that in particular. That when you have every opportunity to coach it, you have every opportunity to get it right, and we don't get it right. I have utmost faith in, in Messiah that he's going to come back and he's worked. Last night he worked really hard, uh, but those things have to be, you, you can't allow those things to happen. What's different about this UCF team uh, when you look at uh, George O'Leary and the difference with Scott Frost? Energy, uh, just a ton more energy. I mean, you know, he's, he's coming off a, a situation to where, you know, they didn't, you know, they weren't familiar with what it was like to win. He brought in all this, you know, a lot of music and practice, and a lot of high tempo and next play, a lot of things that we believe in, uh, just a lot of energy. And from, you know, Trey Quan moving into this year, he was rookie of the year last year. So now moving into this year, he also, also has McKenzie as a, you know, as a true freshman quarterback. Just think of all the energy and the youth and all that that goes with it. So when it's all new and everybody understands that we, got, we have nothing to lose, it's a great, great feeling. A lot like the one that we have here. We, we love the situation that we're in here. Our quarterback situation, our receivers, everybody's so energized. You know, sometimes on the outside, looking in, it may seem a certain way, but these kids were ready to go. Uh, we, we, we got outmatched, we got outplayed, we got outcoached, and uh, it's a learning lesson for a lot of us, and, and we can't wait to correct what we put on tape from Saturday.